All right, guys, this video is probably going to be pretty funny because I am myself a knife tuber and I have many knives in my collection. But I wanted to make a video talking about should you trust knife tubers and when it comes to recommending knives. Now, this is a video that I've done similar to um, this is a video that I've kind of actually done many years ago when I talked about outdoor knives and how I was really tired of, you know, many outdoorsmen and many bushcrafters kind of just making designs, pushing them out to their subscribers and their follower bases to try to turn a profit on their subscribers. And I kind of want to talk about that for EDC because we see that a lot, especially with some figures in the EDC knife community. And I'm not going to try to name any names as directly in this video, but you do see a lot of companies um, wanting to work with either predominant or you see especially a lot of Chinese companies wanting to work with um, especially predominant figures in the EDC knife realm whether they are designers um, like specifically custom knife manufacturers or YouTubers themselves you know they really look for people who already have established audiences you know whether that be you know a knife maker or a knife tuber and try to get them to essentially collaborate and make especially Chinese knives but um, it really anyway in the world and so like should you trust these guys who you know say are youtubers and came out with the perfect uh, knife design and I think uh, similarly to that video that I made many moons ago I would really just say stay quite skeptical of especially anyone that's coming out and saying that you know they have found the perfect knife or especially if they say they've made the perfect knife because you know what may be a perfect knife in their eyes probably won't be a perfect knife in your eyes and I think the biggest issue you run into is at the core and at the end of the day most knife tubers even myself to an extent included are out out here trying to share their passion but at the same time to um, monetize that passion right so if they come out with the latest and greatest most epic design for a knife and they think you should buy it oftentimes that's what they're saying on the front and some of people have um, kind of broken that third wall when it comes to different um, advertisers and that's why I try to stay you know pretty moderate with my advertisers like I have some affiliate links down in my descriptions but I don't do these long drawn out um, advertisement intros of like this is why you should go buy things from my medic and you know I do like a lot of their stuff and I definitely am in the medical field myself and so I appreciate what they do and if you want to support them that's great but I'm not trying to draw out these ads right but anyway so some of these guys have made videos you know kind of breaking that third wall or made parts of their videos breaking that third wall so to speak of you know they may not fully believe in the people that they have hosted on their channel for advertisements but they do it to make money and so that has always kind of left me jaded as a viewer and subscriber to those channels um, so I try not to replicate that myself but at the same time too like I said a lot of these knife uh, knife tubers when they work with companies like Civivi or um, We Knives or any anyone else really they are trying to push a product on you and um, so they're going to sit there and claim like, oh, this is the best knife that's ever been for EDC. And oftentimes, too, another thing that really gets me and one of my kind of just natural like mental red flags is whenever something seems very gimmicky, like there's a particular knife, once again, won't name it or its designer, that is a budget knife made by Civivi. And one of the large pushes to, towards it is the fact that you can interchange handles and customize it to really make it your own. And don't get me wrong, I, I don't think that there's anything inherently wrong with that model. Um, once again, you know, it's very similar, very reminiscent to one of my favorite knife manufacturers, that is Hinderer. Obviously, mine is customized. And with Hinderer, especially XM18s, you can, you know, change the colors of the handles. You can get wood, you can get, um, you know, other natural materials, you can get different blade shapes, blade uh, materials. So obviously, these are very customizable. But um, I don't really feel like Hinderer um, 
personally pushes that as like, oh, you should buy a hinderer because you can customize them and make them a million different flavors, right? They, they don't try to capitalize off of a gimmick. They're just out there making knives. And if they want a Tonto version of their blades, they make it. If they want a recurve, they make it. And so, you know, they, they have these options out there available for their consumers, but it's not as much of a pushed gimmick as this other knife made by a particular knife influencer in the, the community, the EDC community and so I say you know stay really skeptical of gimmicks and the primary reason why that is is because um, that particular knife stock like bone stock black handled um, is you know around $60 right but then you buy you know two sets of g10 handles and now that's $40 right so now you've taken a $60 knife that is still a $60 knife and you've now put $100 into it right and then say you want some other you know like clips or maybe you know limited edition handles and so you end up now spending closer to you know uh, $200 on the knife so you still have a $60 knife that you now put $200 into right and so I think that this is the thing that um, they don't want to tell you these types of youtubers don't want to tell you about their knives is they're fast to say hey you can make this your own knife but then before you know it you're buying you know we um, Nintendo we styled handles for your Wii banter, right? Like the, you end up spending so much money on these things that, you know, your $100 knife is now $300 or you've sunk $300 into a $100 knife. And once again, if that's something that's just a passion project, a labor of love, like it's not necessarily an entirely bad thing, but oftentimes a lot of these companies are like, how can we make more money off of this community? And so it's something that you just got to stay skeptical of. And it's one thing that I think uh, I've hammered before and that is that if you genuinely love it and you know like certain blade shapes right um or certain blade manufacturers you know if you love it get it and i'm not saying don't buy these things because they're trying to take advantage of you but if they're openly trying to take advantage of you if you don't love it and you're just trying to buy you know like a wee banter because it's what your favorite knife channel recommends don't buy it you know um, go out and explore and find your own knives because that's once again and i've said in other videos why this hinder xm18 is one of my favorites is honestly it and um, my strider smg are not very popular on youtube like you don't see a lot of people edcing these in fact you'll see a lot of people especially with the striders you know they they will crap talk these knives and tell you how bad they are and it's like you know they're really not as bad as most people will tell you they are and they're just fine they're honestly another knife um but i like them because they're what i'm personally drawn to i'm not listening to other influential knife tubers out there i'm paving my own way and i have my own direction and personally for me and my channel i like spending a lot more time with knives that are old school these are knives that you know i looked at when i was you know a young teenager and i really liked things like this emerson minicom i was like man you know i really like that knife and now i'm at the point of being an adult you know having a well-paying job and now i can afford to buy these knives right and so now i'm targeting myself to like go out into the knife forms and specifically find these knives, you know, find older versions, you know, of like things like the Minicom that are made in 2009, made in that time that I really value. So, you know, I'm paving my own way in the knife community and that's why I try to, or that's what I try to recommend to most people is don't buy into the hype. And if there's a specific knife tuber out there that's like, oh, I just created the perfect knife or the most customizable knife. These are oftentimes things like gimmicks to push sales, to push you know more money and try to, to milk you for what you're worth i mean if a knife is really worth its salt you shouldn't have to customize it i mean most of these knives are plain jane you know they're not really customized i mean granted i do have titanium carbon fiber scales on this little pilar and of course i do have a customized hinderer but um you know those are things that like i personally wanted to i, I like my hinderer so much that i want to make it my own personal hinderer and and I, I love the color purple, so, or at least dark purple. And so that's why I, you know, made it that way. So in the end, without dragging on and going on too many rabbit trails, you know, I, I just recommend continually trying to like 
stay congruent with this thought and process that you should pave your own way when it comes to the knife world. There are tons of knives out there and uh, stay skeptical of even your favorite knife tubers, even if it's myself, you know. Definitely don't trust me if I come out one day saying, you know, I've invented the perfect knife, right? Because all of us are humans, all of us are fallible. We can all make mistakes. And so at the same time, like I said, none of us are perfect. And uh, yeah, stay skeptical of everyone, like I said, including myself and um yeah try to enjoy and really like i said pave your own way in the knife community it is fun and i do personally enjoy collecting knives and once again I'm, i always have a heart more towards the older knives and part of that i also like and feel makes me a little bit more trustworthy is clearly no one's sponsoring me to talk about an emerson minicom right like these things haven't been produced actually they're still being produced but i should say you know i love things like my um Emerson Horseman, right? This is a mini CQC8. This thing hasn't been produced in darn near 10 years, right? Like this is an old knife. And so obviously no one is sponsoring me and I'm not making any money off of talking about the CQC8. I just happen to really like it. And it's a nice knife that uh, I wanted to have in my collection. So I added it and uh, yeah. And I think that's really like the core of knife collecting should be, um, you know, just having a knife or looking at knives seeing what you genuinely are drawn to and collecting those knives and not necessarily following any any type of hype or you know like oh i have to go add the wee banter or the civivi elementum or the civivi baby banter and you know i have to get it in the wood scales because i want it to be my own it's like you know there's there's probably, you know, like 500 other people out there that have the wood scaled baby banter or even the full size banter, right? Um, you know, so probably not as special as you think it is. And um, especially if it's coming from China, it's definitely mass produced. So yeah, anyways, guys, that's my video. And that's why you should be skeptical of knife tubers. Like I said, I'm not saying don't trust them. And I'm not saying don't trust myself because I try to make videos on what I'm interested in and what peaks my interests but do stay skeptical of all of us right like we all have our own objectives in life where we want to go and that may not be congruent with yours so definitely you know take it with a grain of salt anyways guys as always god bless and i'm out